With this little tiny box, I can access my PC, my Mac, or Linux computer anywhere in the world through the cloud for free. No subscriptions, just a one-time purchase. I know, it seems too good to be true. So I'm going to install this on my PC, grab my Aces Z13 Flow, go across town and connect it to my phone's hotspot or local Wi-Fi, whatever is accessible, and see if I can connect to my PC remotely. But will I be able to access my PC at all? How is the experience with this thing? And can I troubleshoot it if I run into any problems? First, we gotta talk about the tech that is in this thing. This is the Comet PoE Remote KVM Control from GL.inet, who are kindly sponsoring this video. Now, PoE stands for Power Over Ethernet and KVM stands for Keyboard, Video, and Mouse. Inside this little guy, there's a bunch of tech that not only allows you to access your PC or server remotely, but it also lets you run things almost as if you were there in person. With everything that's here, it feels like you can do anything, anywhere, at any time. This is something that's ideal for developers, engineers, technical support, and pretty much anyone that works remotely. And it also allows you to do some productivity work as well. Not to mention that there is a built-in lifetime VPN, but there's also tail scale support which means that you can have a mesh VPN built into the system that's available with the click of a button. Up to 4K at 30 hertz thanks to the H.264 video encoding, two-way audio so you can still have that conference call or work remotely and have calls if you need to, 32 gigabytes of EMMC storage on board, and the option of self-host, which means that you can remotely manage your own servers. Now, I think one of the biggest things with this is that you can even access your computer at the hardware level. You have BIOS control, out of band management, and even remote troubleshooting. Now, I'm in Florida and there are storms here all the time. And with storms, you have thunder and lightning. So it's really common for us to lose our power or for power to flicker on from end off from time to time. There are some instances where power will turn off entirely for a few minutes, if not hours on end. But if you're on the other side of the world, how are you going to turn on your PC or server once the power comes back? The people over at GL.inet sell an ATX power control board. This hooks up to these guys, your front panel connectors, and this will allow you to control your PC and everything remotely as long as there's power, of course. They also sell a Fingerbot, which is a mechanical arm that physically presses down your PC's power button. They didn't send that to me to review, but I think that it's neat and it's a practical solution. With the ATX control board though, you will definitely have more than enough. Now, unboxing both of these was pretty straightforward. For the PoE KVM, you essentially got the unit itself. You got a USB-A to USB-C cable, a USB-C to USB-C cable, and then you also got an HDMI cable and an Ethernet cable. Now, the HDMI cable that did come with this wasn't compatible with my uh, 3080 in my computer for some reason. So I just needed to go ahead and grab a random one. I grabbed the one that was with my Nintendo Switch and that's what I used in order to access everything. Um, I don't know if mine was just a dud for whatever reason it may be, but yeah, once I finally connected that, it finally worked. For the ATX power control board, on the other hand, it comes with the board itself, a screw package, an ATX bracket set, a nine pin wire set, and a USB-A to USB-C cable. Now with the KVM, you have a USB 2.0 port, a reset button, an HDMI in, as well as a keyboard and mouse connection and a power over ethernet or a PoE port. There's also an optional five volt two amp input on the side. For the ATX power control board, the only thing that you have in terms of connectivity is a USB-C port, and this is to connect directly into the KVM. That way you can power on your PC or server remotely without any issues at all. But this is all nice in theory. Let's see how this actually works in a real world scenario. Now doing a test with all this stuff is the most interesting thing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that Asus Flow Z13 with me to the other side of town. Originally I wanted to take a train, but when I got to the train station, I saw that there was an accident. So I just decided to go to a family member's house and pretty much got everything set up and ready to go. Now let's test and see how this thing actually runs. And if you run into any problems when you boot up your computer, you can still access your BIOS if you need to and pretty much do anything that you would normally do to troubleshoot your system in order to get it back up and running. This is because everything that you need with the PoE KVM allows you to get a display out and see it on your remote access computer and pretty much have access to use the keyboard and mouse that you have attached to your remote access computer.
Once you have remote access to your computer, that's when you can go ahead and start messing around with things. Now, by default, it is going to be set to 1440p resolution and set to a 60 hertz refresh rate. If you go to 4K, then it's gonna be down to 30 hertz. So I prefer the 1440p, that way you can get that 60 FPS uh, refresh. But you know, at the end of the day, it really depends on your internet connection. But I wanted to test out some productivity apps on here. So I went into Photoshop as well as DaVinci Resolve, and I did a little bit of gaming as well, but I'll give you a tour of the application first. Okay, so I recorded some footage over at my sister's house, which is roughly around 20, 30 minutes away from my house. And uh, yeah, it was definitely very shaky. I am going to be posting all of that footage on my Patreon page for free so anyone can have access and just see how it is. It's just, it's super shaky and I'll show a little bit right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and go through a whole tour of the app that is the same app that I have on the other computer, just here on this computer so you can see how it looks like. When we're looking at this app, there are a lot of things that you want to keep in mind. So this is just, you know, uh, Steam, no big deal and everything like that. But if you were to look up here in the settings on the video, you have different options. For example, for normal, you can control the quality of the video that's there. Now, I don't really like this. I prefer smart simply because of the fact that bandwidth tends to fluctuate. And if for any reason the bitrate drops, then you are going to have some problems with that. There is also the orientation of the image. So if you have a panel or a monitor that is a vertical orientation, you can switch it out so that it looks like that on here as well. Obviously, you know, that'll mess up with how you interact with things with the mouse and keyboard, but it is a nice to have when it comes down to it. Now, by default, this is set to 2560 by 1440 at 60 hertz. You can do 4K, but it will drop that down to 30 hertz for the refresh rate, which, you know, it, it really just depends on what you prefer. 1440 is more than enough for me and then the 60 hertz refresh rate is nice especially if i wanted to go ahead and play some games um, but aside from that, if there is a speaker that you want to have, you know, if you want audio coming out, if you want your microphone to be set up and running, then that's another option as well. And uh, the cool thing is that the keyboard that you have attached to your computer works, uh, especially if you're doing remote access. But if for any chance it doesn't, you can have a virtual keyboard pop up, which is a pretty convenient feature, uh, especially, you know, because sometimes if, if you're physically not there, you're not going to be able to troubleshoot. So this is a nice workaround when it comes down to it. There is. Uh, there are other things that are here, like the show local cursor, which would be this, and then the mouse jiggle that's there. Uh, also, the scroll rate is there, um, and also different things like the mouse mode. Now, the relative uh, kind of just goes ahead and, and changes where it is, but you can't really like see it. Uh, see how it kind of just like disappears. Um, then there with uh, absolute, you can kind of like, see it more coherently and understand more or less where it is. Now for the system itself, you have your uh, JL KVM default, but there are other options that are here. And if you look at it, it pretty much says that, you know, this is the EDID and device identification, which will remain synchronized. Um, now there are other options that are here. For example, the, um, the color mode time zone, as well as the language. If you look at the bottom corner that's right here, there is a bit rate that is continuously going and you can see that it is peer-to-peer uh, -peer, and it is uh, around 50, 59 to 60 frames per second, uh, which is pretty convenient. On the bottom right-hand corner over here, you have your different status options that are here. So you have a status for the stream, you have status for the keyboard as well as the mouse and um, the volume and the microphone as well. This always pops up. Um, you can drag it around and move it wherever you want um, or you can just you know put it down and, and and call it a day. Um, now, if you deny microphone access, you know, that's another thing that's there, but I digress. Now, the toolbox is pretty convenient because if you wanted to actually uh, copy something from your uh, the computer that you have remote access to, to the computer that you are accessing, then you can do so by copying and pasting over here, and then you have access to it over here. It's pretty convenient. Uh, I haven't ran into too many instances where I had to do that, but if you're troubleshooting or if you need, you know, something to put into a server or into a remote access to a computer, then this is really nice as well. Obviously a bunch of shortcuts for the options that are here and uh, wake on land for any sort of device and accessing the terminal as well. Now for accessories, there isn't anything that's here because I'm using the computer that has my ATX power control board uh, connected into it. But if uh, I were to access it remotely, then you would be able to see uh, different options like 
a long press of the power button, a short press of the power button, as well as a reset. Um, that way, you know, if for any reason you need to reboot, do a hard reset, or just turn on the computer after like a power outage or whatever it may be, then you can go ahead and do so uh, pretty securely. Now for virtual media, this kind of uh, is more about uploading files onto the host and uh, kind of accessing them remotely if you need to. And for the app sensor, you have your tail scale, which is pretty convenient and a nice way to keep things secure in the grand scheme of things. Now you can go ahead and change a couple of the settings that are here. You can reboot if you need to, you can exit it or log out if you need to. There's also security for changing your password for your administrator, as well as two-factor authentication, as well as cloud access, MAC address, and things like that. So overall, it's it's pretty nice. I do like the fact that you can do a full screen if you need to. This will help kind of just make it feel a little bit more like uh, you're using the computer uh, and, and not actually doing a remote access, but just using it as is. In order to exit, all you got to do is hold escape for a few seconds and it'll pop right back out. As you can see, I'm editing a video right now. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward. And I've got to say that it's very, very com convenient when it comes down to using this. Now, the cool thing is that you can access your computer just like anything else. So if you wanted to do any sort of work, well, you can do that. So let's say that we wanted to just open up, let's say DaVinci Resolve for whatever reason. Let's go ahead and pop that open and uh, we can just run this and get it going. That way we can actually do some work. Now, I don't have any projects that I'm currently working on on my DaVinci Resolve profile here. Most of them I've moved over to my main computer now that I'm not traveling at the moment. But as you can see, I have a bunch of different things that are here if I wanted to go ahead and work on things. And it's nice because you can literally just drag and drop and kind of just do whatever work it is that you need to do. If I wanted to go ahead and color grade, I can just easily do it and just, you know, create a couple of nodes, do the color grading that I wanted to do, uh, apply any sort of effects that I needed to apply on whatever I needed to get going. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It does the job relatively well. The only problem is that if I were to color grade in something like this, I would be seeing whatever colors are on my monitor and not actually on the computer that I'm working on, which, you know, obviously that's just science. You're not going to be able to actually see whatever is going on over there. But this allows me to be able to access the files that I need to, file, to access. And if I need to actually download, upload, whatever it may be, I can just access a browser and just get things going. So it's pretty convenient in that sense that I'm able to, well, pretty much use my computer to its fullest without actually being there. All right, and as you can see, I am currently playing Baldur's Gate 3, and um, yeah, the latency is pretty much non-existent. I don't know if my uh, microphone will pick up the clicks that I'm putting here, but yeah, it's pretty uh, almost a seamless when it comes down to it. Now, obviously, it really just depends on, you know, the, uh, the type of games that you're into and whatnot, but I really think that if you want to play something like this remotely, you want to make sure that you're playing something that is a little bit slower, that's like a turn-based game, something like Baldur's Gate 3 or any sort of uh, typical RPG. Really just depends on what it is that you want. But yeah, I could totally see myself or anyone else playing something like this just to, you know, have a game to play with or, you know, just have like a quick gaming session. It really just depends on the individual and what it is that they want to go ahead and experience. But as you can see here, the latency is pretty much non-existent um, and is pretty awesome. Now, obviously, this isn't meant for playing games. This is meant for technically doing uh, remote work or actually doing any sort of administrative work or any productivity work. This is just something that is there to access your computer remotely if you need to or your server remotely. But yeah, if you want to, you could totally play games. And yeah, it just it, it works just as it should, which is honestly kind of awesome. Another thing that you can do if you need to is do work like Photoshop. Obviously, once again, you're looking at a monitor through a monitor. So the color accuracy that you're going to get from the monitor is really kind of up in the air because every single monitor is slightly decalibrated. So you're going to want to make sure that everything is as calibrated as possible. But I digress. At the end of the day, you can still do the work that you need to do if you need to remotely. And I think that's probably the biggest thing when it comes to something like this, whether you're doing administrative work, whether you're doing any sort of uh, server work, whatever it may be, having something like this is definitely nice to have. Well, pretty much for anyone that needs remote access. 
All right, let's go over the pros and cons. For the pros, I mean, the price for what you get is unbeatable. Being able to access your computer or server from anywhere at this price is insanely good. Add the P2P and tail scale security protections, and I have little to complain about personally. You can basically do whatever you need to do when you want to on the go whenever you want. It's just honestly fantastic. Now, when it comes to the cons though, that's a whole different story. Although the price is good, I wish that I could get higher frame rates over 60 FPS and maybe even, you know, 120 FPS option, but at 1080p. I think that that would be awesome, especially not just, you know, for the gaming perspective of things, but overall the smoothness of things. Obviously that would, you know, cause a change of infrastructure and having a, um, a more demanding bandwidth on things, but it would just be nice to have. I just don't understand why that isn't there. This is obviously meant for serious work and not gaming, but it would be a plus. Also, I wish that there was some sort of wireless option. When I originally wanted to test this out was on my son's computer. I wanted to see if I can access it remotely, but it isn't anywhere near an ethernet port. So let's say that you have a PC that isn't in the same room as a router or a switchboard, but I have a solid Wi-Fi 7 connection. Then I wish that I could connect this over Wi-Fi somehow. So who is this for? Regardless, this is a phenomenal piece of tech, but it's not for everyone. This isn't meant to be a replacement for cloud gaming or to remotely edit a video, although you kind of can if you want to, but it is a great option for someone who is an engineer, a developer, a productivity user, a system admin, whatever it is, but it's definitely for someone that is more on the professional side than the gaming side of things. Someone who needs to do remote debugging, recover a crashed machine, or and just have remote access to the BIOS of a machine and much more. Now, I think that this is a pretty solid device and it does what it promises to do with the different options that are out there and the ability to take advantage of the tail scale support for security. I think that this is a valid option for anyone considering streaming from their computer for either work or playing games. I've got a link down below if you wanna go ahead and grab one for yourself, but I've got a video here talking about the Asus Flow Z13 that I use in this video to test everything out. Thanks for your time, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.